Only one player can help the New Orleans Saints prove that they are the explosive team they looked like the first two weeks of the season, and that's running back Alvin Kamara. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Huda Nation and Huda family? I am your host, your friend, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credentialed member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a Saints beat writer over at LouisianaSports.net and Saints analyst on WWL TV. On today's episode of Locked on Saints, we're going to take a look at the two different configurations I can see the New Orleans Saints marching out for their offensive line, depending on the attrition of the unit we're going to break that down and get you ready for sunday's game we're also going to get you ready for sunday's game by going through our five keys to victory our jackson five on today's show we'll take a look at the defensive side including how the pass rush absolutely must set the tone for the new orleans saints defense and we're starting off with a look at the new orleans saints offense which needs to be revitalized by one single player Alvin Kamara. We appreciate you very much as always for making us your first listen of the day every day and for being in every day or here on the show, which is a proud part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by friends over at FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started well the new orleans saints want to prove that week one and week two were better representations of who they actually are as a football team than their week three loss against the philadelphia eagles it all starts with running back alvin Kamara. now i said that he's the only one that gives them the chance but look it comes down to all 11 right there's no doubt about that because you got to be able to block for alvin Kamara. you got to be able to throw to alvin Kamara. you got to be able to hand off to alvin Kamara. so everybody else is involved too Derek carr the offensive line all that but What we know is that this New Orleans Saints offense works when its run game works. And so this all comes down to getting Alvin Kamara going. So let's take a look at our Jackson 5, the things that matter most when it comes down to a potential win for the New Orleans Saints. As always, we'll start off with our first three, which are all over on the offensive side. Uh, Number one becomes protect Derek Carr as well as Alvin Kamara. Uh, Get your quick passing game going and uh, potentially move the pocket if you need to and get your stars involved early. This, of course, are the keys up against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, So when we look at the idea of protecting Derek Carr and protecting Alvin Kamara, this game, to me, comes down to both of those guys being comfortable. But most, not importantly, but immediately to the beginning of the game, it comes down to Alvin Kamara being kept comfortable, right? His ability to pick up yards before before contact and things like that become very, very important. Uh, Alvin Kamara, over the course of the first two games of the season, was being given nearly three yards before carry or before contact per rush. This past game against the Philadelphia Eagles, that number dropped to below two yards uh, per carry before contact. That's a big adjustment. That's an entire, it was about a one, a little bit over a one yard fall. If you add in on his 26 rushes, an additional rushing yard for each of those before a contact, all of a sudden, it's a 100-yard game, and that's probably the difference of a few first downs, extending drives, being in better situations on third downs, things like that. All of that becomes really, really important when it comes down to keeping Alvin Kamara uh, comfortable and keeping Alvin Kamara uh, free in that run game. So that's going to be a big part of what we're looking for. The New Orleans Saints offense is predicated on its rushing attack. You got to be able to get that rushing attack going. That's not going to be an easy task up against the Atlanta Falcons, more so because of the injuries that the New Orleans Saints are dealing with on the offensive line. They'll be without starting center Eric McCoy, and they may also be without starting right guard Cesar Ruiz. We'll break down what the offensive line may look like in this game a little bit later, but just something to keep note here or keep note of here because four offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak, four running back Alvin Kamara, four quarterback Derek Carr, four all of the other skill position players. All of it is going to be based and their success is going to hinder on the success of the offensive line in the trenches, which is not too different from any other week. However, now you're dealing with having to play reserves, having to play backups at those spots as opposed to having your five starting offensive linemen. So just something to keep an eye out on 
when we as we uh, kind of enter into the conversation around what will win this game for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, our second point was uh, the quick passing game and potentially moving the pocket if you need to. I think both of these things will help you if you're struggling is the New Orleans Saints to protect Derek Carr. So we talked about getting the run game going. Now the next part is going to be about keeping Derek Carr comfortable and keeping him clean. One of the ways to do that doesn't necessarily have to mean that the offensive line has to hold up for five seconds every time that the ball is snapped and Derek Carr drops back. But if the run game is going, that's going to help to alleviate some of the pass rush from the Atlanta Falcons. Not that the Atlanta Falcons have a fierce pass rush. They're lowest in the NFL right now when it comes to pressure percentage. And through the first three games of a season, they have the second lowest pass rush uh, in terms of uh, pressure percentage. They have the second lowest pressure percentage since 2018. So they're nearly historically bad when it comes to their pass rush. But you as the New Orleans Saints can't gift them that pass rush, right? They can be bad going into the game all that they want. It doesn't mean that they're going to be bad in the game that you're going up against them. So New Orleans on the offensive line is going to have to work to keep Atlanta's pass rush looking like Atlanta's pass rush, which also finished last season with the eighth lowest pressure percentage in the league. So this has been a long running issue for Atlanta. New Orleans will need to keep that going, keep them doing what it is that they do uh, up against them this weekend in Atlanta. And so if you're able to keep Derek Carr clean, that's very helpful. But you don't want to rely on the offensive line to do that for five for four or five seconds every snap. So getting the ball out quickly is going to be very important in this one, too. A quick passing game could have helped New Orleans quite a bit last week up against the Philadelphia Eagles when they were stacking the defensive line, only had one linebacker hanging over the top. That's a lot of space for ins, digs, slants, things like that. The kind of quick passing game to force them to back off. New Orleans didn't necessarily get the chance to take advantage of that or didn't take the opportunity to take advantage of that. This week, that will have to change because Atlanta is going to try to do some of the things that Philly did to limit the New Orleans Saints run game. You need them to back off. And so getting that quick passing game going, being able to run out of 11 personnel and potentially moving the pocket off of you know a, a speed uh, speed uh, kind of, op not a speed option, but you know like a, a, a speed move for Derek Carr right out of the, right out of the, uh, out of the snap where it's not necessarily a rollout or anything like that, but that he speeds towards the outside. The offensive line moves with them. You bring a levels concept over there. And then, of course, if your pass rush is going, then you get the, or excuse me, your, your rush game is going, then you get the opportunity to add on uh, a bit of play action to help with all that as well, freeze some of those second-level players and some of that secondary. Finally, get your stars involved early. This is a big one for me coming into this one. Um, the Saints have done really well with this. They've relied on Chris Olave. They've relied on Rashid Shaheed, and they've relied on Alvin Kamara. Those are your biggest names. Get them involved. But you've got big names at tight end as well. Taysom Hill expected to be back for this game. He was uh, uh, elevated to a full participant in Thursday's practice, yesterday's practice. Uh, you've also got Foster Moreau. You've got Juwan Johnson. All these guys can contribute, but get them involved early. Go back to Rashid Shaheed, who had a catchless game last week. Don't steer away from him. Continue to feed, continue to feed him, continue to show him that you have that um, confidence in him, like you did with Alvin Kamara all throughout last week as well. Continuing to go to the run game, not getting away from it, all those things. Uh, I think New Orleans will be uh, better off, better served if they continuously go back to the guys that are going to make the plays for them. And that's not different than what they've been doing so far this year, but definitely something to. Uh, watch out for. All right, coming up next, I want to take a look over on the defensive side and the keys to victory and everything, of course, gets started with a pass rush that has been um, very improved for the New Orleans Saints so far here in 2024. We got that coming up for you next as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by friends over at Robin Hood Gold. With Robin Hood Gold, you won't need a silver spoon to enjoy the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks that are typically reserved for those of high society. Now, a resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold will earn a very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, uh, receive an unlimited 1% uh, deposit bonuses as well, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost from an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides you the privileges of high net worth at any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for just $5 a month. 
Uh, the new gold standard is Robin Hood Gold. Sign up today at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific details, make sure that you visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Uh, rate may change, and gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by friends over at Prize Picks, the easiest and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. I absolutely love prize picks because it's super simple. You pick two to six players. You choose whether or not they're going to come in at more or less than their projection. So, for instance, Tyreek Hill more or less than 90 receiving yards. Dak Prescott, more or less than 263 passing yards. Josh Allen, more or less than 240 passing yards. You get the idea. You choose more or less, you get those right, and you can win up to 100 times your entry back by just getting as little as four correct picks. Make sure you go and check them out today over at prizepicks.com. Um, download the Prize Picks app today and use the promo code Locked On NFL. You'll get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code L O C K E D O N N F L over at Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. And you don't even need to win to receive that fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. All right, family. The New Orleans Saints must have their defensive tone set by their pass rush. We appreciate you, as always, for being here for another episode of Locked on Saints. Let's continue on with our Jackson 5, breaking down what the New Orleans Saints need to do to get a win week four against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. So we took a look at the offensive side. We're going to switch gears over to the defensive side now and take a look at uh, stopping the run on early downs and getting pressure on Kirk Cousins. I actually want to take a look at that in reverse order. I want to start with getting pressure on Kirk Cousins because this has been very effective against the Falcons so far this season. And believe it or not, the New Orleans Saints have actually been quite good when it comes to generating pressure so far this season. Through the first three games of the 2023 season, the Saints have generated 50 pressures. So far this season, they're up to 62 pressures. Now, a 12 pressure difference is a pretty nice difference, especially when you have two players that are contributing more, 15 or more pressures alone by themselves. That's Carl Granderson and Chase Young. Now, depending upon which advanced analytics site you ask, there's a bit of a difference between what you read around Chase Young. If we take a look at next-gen stats, both Chase Young and Carl Granderson are tied for number four in the NFL right now for 18 pressures apiece. According to Pro Football Focus, Chase Young's pressures count at 15. But in any case, that means the New Orleans Saints are sitting at either 60, 62 or 65 total pressures on the season, depending upon whose numbers you trust more. That's big. For New Orleans. And it's pretty big for a guy like uh, Carl Granderson, who's only being chipped at about 10.6% on the line. And then Chase Young, who's being chipped almost uh, around 9%. It's just a little more than 9% so far on the offensive line. So that means that they're, or on the defensive line, rather. So they're getting some of these one on one matchups. They're not being double teamed a ton, although they are being double teamed every now and then. Um, this is a good opportunity for them because remember, just like the New Orleans Saints are without their starting center and Eric McCoy, starting center Drew Dahlman for the Atlanta Falcons is also out of this game. And they're still not sure in Atlanta if they're going to have tackle Caleb McGarry back just yet. So that could end up being a good situation for New Orleans to be able to continue to dominate with their front four. That's been a big uh, benefit for the New Orleans Saints, at least over the course of the first few games. Pressure percentage-wise and pressure rate-wise, we talked about how the Atlanta Falcons were the number 32 team bottom of the NFL when it comes to pressure rate. Well, the New Orleans Saints fall right around half. They're at number 17. But here's the thing that helps them out. The Atlanta Falcons have given up and surrendered the 26th highest pressure rate so far this season, or rather, not the 26th, but their 26th in pressure rate allowed, meaning that they've given up the sixth or seventh uh, highest uh, pressure rate so far. So the advantage goes to New Orleans in that case. How does pressure impact the Atlanta Falcons? Well, it has impacted Kirk Cousins quite a bit. Kirk Cousins has thrown only three interceptions so far this season. All three of them have come under pressure while also completing just 53.3% of his passes and throwing a 47.6 NFL passer rating during that time as well. So these are big uh, opportunities for New Orleans has also been 
four turnover worthy throws, according to Pro Football Focus, by Kirk Cousins when under pressure. The New Orleans Saints have proven to be a pretty opportunistic defense when it comes to taking advantage of those turnover worthy plays. Can they do that against Kirk Cousins and the Atlanta Falcons? Uh, the other thing that you're looking at when it comes to Kirk Cousins is moving him off of his spot. He hasn't been moved off of his spot quite a bit uh, this season, but when he has, it has worked out well for the opposing team. He's either scrambled or he's gone, I think it's two of six, if I recall correctly, in terms of his uh, completions. One of them, though, was a touchdown in week one or in, the, or in an earlier week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That one going to Kyle Pitts, something the New Orleans Saints, obviously a player that they don't want to see go off over on the defensive side. Uh, especially after giving up over 100, what was it 170 yards uh, to Dallas Goddard, the Philadelphia Eagles tight end last week. So the Saints, for the most part, can control this game a little bit by getting pressure on defense. So they can do that with their defensive line, thanks to guys like Carl Granderson and Chase Young. Yes, absolutely. But interior pressure, even greater benefit there. So seeing a guy like Brian Brzee, who's coming off of a two-sack game, potentially getting Colin Saunders back, who Joe Wood said would give them a big boost over on the defensive line. These are all players that can also have a pretty good sort of impact for New Orleans. And Nathan Shepard, who has one of the better get-offs amongst defensive tackles in the NFL so far this year, according to Next Gen Stats, there's another opportunity for you to maybe create a little bit of disruption right up the middle, get that interior pressure right up the middle, and end up impacting Kirk Cousins' game, especially if you can move him off of his spot force him to make some of those bad decisions. He's playing right now as an even-footed quarterback when he used to be a left-foot back quarterback off of those shotgun snaps. That has kind of impacted his ability to drop back a little bit, making him hold on to the ball a little bit more. These are all things the New Orleans Saints can take advantage of. Sorry, I'm getting into the weeds a little bit. But I do think that like the intricate details like that are things that could end up deciding this game for the New Orleans Saints. So a big thing to watch is the New Orleans Saints' ability to get pressure on Kirk Cousins and be able to take advantage of that by being opportunistic in the secondary or really just on the defensive side as a whole. Now, the Saints may end up being without Demario Davis here. We're not sure just yet. He did not participate in practice on Wednesday or Thursday. He did observe on Wednesday. We did not see him at all on Thursday. We'll see what happens in today's practice later on and what that means. My expectation is that even if DeMario Davis does not participate in practice on Friday, that he will still be listed as questionable for the game and he will do everything that he can to be out there on the field. Just knowing DeMario, knowing how hard he works, the way that he takes care of his body, the way that he recovers, the way that he preps, all the things that he does, uh, it would not shock me if he was still out there this weekend, even if it was on a little bit of a pitch count or something like that. But the Saints are going to rely heavily on Pete Warner and Willie Gay Jr., be able to kind of help them over the hump if they're without Demario Davis or if Demario Davis is limited in any way. So it's not going to be super easy for the New Orleans Saints defense, but they do have the talent to cover here up against what has been uh, a little bit of a uh, not super impressive Atlanta Falcons team just yet. Just don't turn them impressive. You know what I mean? Uh, last key that I want to take a look at here is uh, stopping the run on early downs. This is going to allow you the ability to be able to really take advantage of the last key that we just talked about when it comes to setting the tone with your pass rush and getting pressure on Kirk Cousins. If you can eliminate the run game as best or limit the run game as best as you can in the first and second downs, when it comes to Bijan Robinson, when it comes to Tyler Algier and the Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons, excuse me, um, then it allows you to be able to put the Falcons into those third and long situations so that you can get pressure on Kirk Cousins, get after him, all those other things. That has to be a big part of what the New Orleans Saints are looking to do here. Kirk Cousins has been sacked only five times so far this season. Is that right? Yeah, only five times so far this season. So uh, all five of those sacks coming, of course, when he was uh, under pressure, but four of them coming when he wasn't blitzed. So it was uh, front four pressure or defensive line pressure that has gotten home so far on him. So just something to keep an eye out on here. I, I think if you're able to limit the run game as best you can, first and second down, that gives you the opportunity to be able to put them in those third and long passing situations, second and long passing situations. So just if you can get a loss on first down or something like that, some kind of negative play, uh, that ends up forcing Kirk Cousins to drop back, eliminates the play action game. You're kind of looking to do to Atlanta what Philly did to you last week if you're the New Orleans Saints because the systems are going to be very, very similar. All right, coming up next, I want to take a look at the New Orleans Saints offensive line, the two options in terms of what I think it might look like this weekend and the players to watch as this 
uh, ongoing saga of attrition continues for the New Orleans Saints. We got that coming up for you next as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And hey, NFL fans, if you want to start off your year with a big return, you can do so over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can go and check out the latest stats, view live, play by play, and much more, all on the same page where you're placing your bets. And speaking of placing bets, the New Orleans Saints. The line moved a little bit. Uh, it opened up a little bit. Saints started as uh, uh, one and a half point underdogs on the road up against Atlanta. Moved to two and a half. Now back down to one and a half with an over under of 42 and a half points. Uh, so depending upon how you feel about this one, you might like the New Orleans Saints in the upset as road dogs. You might uh, like them to drop this game. Whichever you think they're doing, I think they're winning this one. Uh, you can head over to FanDuel to get in on that action right now. And if you're a first time customer, it's even better because you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. $5 bet, first-time customer, you'll get $200 in bonus bets. You can find it all at FanDuel.com. Let's get it, Huda Nation. The New Orleans Saints traveling to Atlanta Falcons, and they're going to be doing so with a little bit of a uh, makeshift offensive line, particularly on the interior I've got two options for the New Orleans Saints offensive line will look like going up against Atlanta. Let's break it all down. Here's what you need to know. So in case you did miss it, Eric McCoy on injured reserve. So he's officially out for the next four weeks. The expectation is that with the groin surgery that he's going to have, that the estimated timeline is about six to eight weeks. Now, I know Eric McCoy. I know the way that he is. I know how hard of a worker he is. He's going to do everything he can to beat that timeline. But as of right now, I would expect a six to eight week return timeline. And then we'll see if things get longer or potentially if he's able to beat that timeline a little bit uh, and get back sooner. So that puts him back either against this in the second game against the Atlanta Falcons in week. What is that week 10 uh, or after the bye week a couple weeks later as the New Orleans Saints return home uh, as well to take on the uh, Los Angeles Rams. So uh, I would expect to see him back somewhere in that sort of range of games, maybe a game later, maybe whatever. Like you, you never know with these injuries, surgery, how the body takes it, all these other things. Uh, so that's the deal when it comes to Eric McCoy. The compounding issue for the New Orleans Saints right now is that starting right guard Cesar Ruiz is dealing with a knee injury, which is different than the thing that actually brought him off the field for a play. I asked Dennis Allen about this, um, and he mentioned that it was a knee injury for Cesar Ruiz. So I followed up and asked, "Is it? was it a knee injury that took him off the field for a play? He said, no, that was actually an ankle injury. So this is a different injury than the thing that he went off the field and returned a play later uh, for. So something to keep in mind there. So uh, for New Orleans, they could be not just without their starting center, but also their starting right guard. If Cesar Ruiz returns to practice later on today, he'll be questionable, could potentially play this weekend then I think you know what the offensive line in that case looks like. Taliesi Puang at left tackle, Trevor Pinning at right tackle. Neither of those things change. So let's focus on what's happening on the interior. Because I think one of two things happens based on whether or not Cesar Ruiz is available. And it comes down to these three players. Uh, the three players to watch are going to be Lucas Patrick, Cesar Ruiz, and Shane Lemieux, who the Saints signed up from their practice squad when Eric McCoy was sent to injured reserve. They then added veteran uh, offensive lineman Chris Reed to their practice squad, give them a little bit more depth there. We'll see if the Saints end up elevating an offensive lineman on Saturday, something that could make sense. But these are the three players that you're most keep an eye on. Patrick, Ruiz, Lemieux. Here's why. If Cesar Ruiz is healthy, I would expect Lucas Patrick to shift in to center. Okay. And that would allow you the opportunity to be able to go with the guy that you effectively signed to be your backup center, but then turned out to be really good uh, and ended up starting for you at left tackle was pro football focus is second highest graded offensive lineman through the first two games. Now, I'm basing that on what we saw from the New Orleans Saints last week in game. It could have been that they simply moved Lucas Patrick to center because that was one of their two options, either move him or move Cesar Ruiz over. And Lucas Patrick had taken center snaps throughout training camp over the course of the preseason, all those other things. So that seemed like the logical way to go. Then Ole Udo slotted in at left guard. So I could see the Saints doing that same thing. 
Here's where the twist is. There's two twists that, it, that, that, that are impacting this. Do the New Orleans Saints now with a full week of prep actually keep Lucas Patrick at left guard, plug in Shane Lemieux as their center, who they signed up from their practice squad, the only other player on this roster outside of Kyle Hergel, the undrafted rookie who's on the practice squad, that took snaps at center. So the Saints could move Lucas Patrick over, or they could keep Lucas Patrick where he is and then start Shane Lemieux at center. And then if Cesar Ruiz is ready to go, they could start Cesar Ruiz at right guard. If he's not ready to go, then I would expect either Ole Udo or Landon Young to plug in at right. I'm not sure which one just yet, but one of those two guys, maybe Landon Young, uh, ends up plugging in at that position. Perhaps Landon Young, who is dealing and coming off of an injury and all those other things, he ended up not going in for New Orleans uh, at all last week, probably because he was still coming back from that injury, which had limited him for most of the practices last week. In fact, he did not participate in some of the practices last week. So I could see the Saints actually being a little bit shifty here and going with Shane Lemieux to try to preserve as much of their starting offensive as possible. This is what we've been begging the New Orleans Saints to do for years now, which is to have an option to back up the center position that doesn't seal from another position. It's finally happened, potentially. So that's why I could see Shane Lemieux potentially being that guy, especially with Lucas Patrick, you know, potentially the idea around him. I mean, it was John Stitchcomb who was on uh, after further review with Matt Moscona, our good friends over at uh, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge, who, of course, are, are partnered with uh, Louisiana Sports.net or, or Power Louisiana Sports.net, where I write. Um, one of the things that John Stitchcomb said was that like, he felt like the Saints signed Lucas Patrick to be a backup center and then turned in and then it turned out, oh no, you could start him at left guard if you wanted to. Uh, Cause remember the original plan always felt like it was going to be Nick Saldaveri at left guard going into his second year. They invested a draft pick for him. They traded up for him, all these other things. And so they could have looked at him that way, but now see him as a starting left guard and want to keep him at starting left guard and want to preserve that. So then the saints brought in a guy like Shane Lemieux, who they also worked at center. Could there be the opportunity to just start him at center, have a bona fide backup center for a change instead of having to upset multiple positions? So this could work in the New Orleans Saints' advantage if Cesar Ruiz is healthy. If he's not healthy, it still gets a little bit more complex just because you're still dealing with two backups on your offensive line. But if one of them is Landon Young, who's been in your system a ton, who's played both guard spots, who's played both tackle spots, I think you can feel a little bit better about that just based on the experience and the odds of him being able to perform against what has been the league's worst pressure group and worst pass rush so far this season from a pressure percentage standpoint. Now, again, you don't want to be the offensive line that surrenders that to them, right? You don't want to be the ones that changes the course of how poorly that offense or that defensive pass rush has performed, but that's more a concern that you have to worry about after the fact. Going into this game, you just got to do what it is that you plan to do, which is run this football, keep Derek Carr safe, all the things that we broke down earlier on in the show. So just to recap the possibilities along the interior of the offensive line. Yes, Lucas Patrick could move over to center and the Saints could start Ole Udo at left guard. And then if they're without Cesar Ruiz, they could plug somebody else in at right guard. Or if Cesar Ruiz is out, keep Lucas Patrick where he is. That way you don't upset another, all three of your interior spots. Start Shane Lemieux at center have somebody else fill in at right guard, maybe Landon Young, maybe Ole Udo, maybe even Nick Saldaveri at right guard, or you end up having Cesar Ruiz healthy, then you can get four of your five starters back out there, in which case Shane Lemieux could start at center. You have a bona fide backup center that doesn't swap out one of your guards. Could be a good way for New Orleans to go. We'll see, though, how they end up handling it. We appreciate you very much, as always, for being here and for making us your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you go and check out the new Locked On NFL, two shows a day, breaking down all the biggest stories from around the National Football League. If you're interested in film studies, one-on-one -on -one conversations, Q&As, all that with me, join the Insider Program. You can find the link in the description or text SAINTS to 504-285-7473. I found a little tip that the... Uh, Atlanta Falcons keep giving up. And so I'm going to do a film study about that right after this. And so that'll be available over in the Insider Program if you want to check that out. We appreciate you very much, as always, for making us your first listen of the day, making us a part of your day, part of your routine, for saying yes to me on the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media. <laughs>